All right. Hello, everybody. Today is uh, Monday, February 6th, and we are wending our way through statics ES2110. Uh, that's just to reference things to make sure that nobody gets nobody gets mistaken as to where we are. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do is to take a look at our schedule and just see where in a perfect world we would be. So here on February 6th, um, you can see that homework number two is due today and that there is a quiz uh, over the first part of the material, which was uh, unit conversions and then chapter two that will be due on Wednesday. So now, as I've told you before, I'm not a stickler for due dates. This is just to keep you so that you don't end up with 16 million hours worth of stuff to do right before the midterm exam. So, but I've been, I graded the first homework and I'll be grading the second homework um, either tomorrow or Wednesday. I kind of like to make sure that everybody who's just a little bit late gets their stuff in. So uh, we'll be doing that and then we'll be taking a look at the quiz. But today, what I would like to do is to ask you what questions you have about the work so far. Can I work any homework problems for you? Do you have any uh, issues that you'd like to talk about? Whatever you got, we'll do it. And if not, I'll just pick a favorite problem and work through it, but... Uh, let me know what you think. Okay, so we have a couple of people who've turned in a chapter two homework already. So, but that means most everybody has not. So I'm assuming you're still working through chapter two. Do you have any questions about any of the homework or if you have any questions about what the quiz is going to be like, anything I can uh, help you with in that respect. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down these problems. This is the problem set for chapter uh, chapter two. And so uh, I'm going to, as I said, you can use different versions of the textbook. However, um, I'll go ahead and work a couple of problems or one or two, one problem at least, from the textbook and then let's take a little bit of time and talk about um, the quiz and what you can expect and we'll go from there. So these are the homework problems. All right. Um, so can we bring this up big? Okay, there we go. So that's the homework problems that we're talking about. So let's go back to our Moodle page, and we'll take a look from the Moodle page what some of those problems are. I think I really like to work 72 and 78. And I don't think I've done the, I've done 78 here. So I haven't looked at 72. So you notice I have worked out a lot of these problems. So today, let's take a look and see if 72 is going to give us some good stuff. Uh, in terms of problem solving, okay. So let's see, we take a look at the textbook. I think I have to go back one, don't I? Think, yeah, so I wanna go back to the second section. There we go. We're getting there. There we go. All right. Problem 272. We have a three dimensional um, vector problem. And I'm going to go ahead and work some of this out for you. Uh, we may work it all out or I may just set it up. So what I'll do first of all is just um, I'm going to keep this problem on my screen, screen on my screen while I work the problem out and then I'll put the paper up so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. 
So first of all, 72 asks us to determine the X, Y, and Z components. Um, of the 800 Newton force. And then to determine the angles theta X, theta Y, and theta Z. Okay. All right. So uh, when I take a look at that problem, first of all, and I'm looking at the 800 Newton force, I'm looking at a force, if I were to, the y-axis is right here, the x-axis, you always have to be careful how the authors draw it, but they draw that, they draw that orthogonally, so that x and y is the plane of the paper or the page, and z comes out of the board. And so what I see about this 800 Newton force is that it makes a 70 degree angle with the floor of the three dimensional um, three dimensional axes system. And then the axis on which it makes that 70 degree angle is 25 degrees um, off of the Z axis. Okay. So what we're looking at is a picture like this. All right. Now, the first thing to recognize is that the angle 70 degrees is not with either the X axis or the Z axis, but rather it's with the plane in which the X, Z, the XZ plane exists. And so in this case, since the YZ plane, excuse me, the YX plane is the plane of the paper, the XZ plane is perpendicular. So it would be like a horizontal plane. So what that tells us then is that theta XZ is equal to 70 degrees. All right. Now, the first thing that that tells us is we know that if the floor of this three-dimensional orthogonal system is the XZ plane, perpendicular to that is the Y-axis. So we know that the angle from the Y-axis to the XZ plane, because they're perpendicular, is 90 degrees. So that means that theta Y is equal to 90 degrees minus 70 degrees or 20 degrees. So we have one piece of information at that point. Okay, that's one of the things that we wanted to know. Now, if we take a look then, let's just project this 800 Newton force into the XZ plane. And then if I draw the XZ plane like this, and I know that when I project this downward, it's going to be uh, to the left of the Z axis. So this is the projection. In other words, this is the force on in the XZ plane. All right. And its magnitude is not 800 because it's 800. Uh, it's a component of 800, which is 800 Newtons. Since this is adjacent, it's times the cosine of 70 degrees. Okay, so the force in the XZ direction is, make sure I'm in, not in radians. I'm in degrees, good for me. All right, let's get rid of that. So um, 800 times the cosine of 70 is equal to, 273.616, or these are all, this is one significant digit. So this is actually quite excessive for significant digits, but I'm gonna leave it there until I actually write some answers down, okay? All right, now what I need to do is to find what the components are along, because it's not asking for planar components, it's asking me for axial or directional components. So I know that this angle is 25 degrees. 
Okay, so that means that the component of the force right here is going to be, in other words, the force in the z direction is going to be the force in the x z direction times the cosine of 25 degrees, because once again, that's adjacent. And it's coming out of the board. In other words, this direction is positive. All right, so the force in the x z direction, which is 273.6 times the cosine of 25 degrees is 247.98 newtons or 248 newtons, okay? And that's still written in a lot of significant figures, but I'm going to leave it in this form until I get done with the rest of it. All right, so this is my force in the Z direction. I wrote X, I apologize, that should be Z right there. All right, the force in the X direction, which actually goes to the left, right? So that's going to be a negative. It's going to be a negative force in the XZ direction, which is 273.6. Now this time it's gonna be times the sine because it's opposite of 25 degrees, okay? So if I take clear 273.6, and multiply that by the sine of 25 degrees, I get negative 115.628 Newtons. All right. Now, the, the next thing it asks me to do is what is the Y component? Well, the good news is, is that since this is 70 degrees, since this force is 70 degrees off of the XZ plane, this angle, as we identified right here, is 20 degrees, which means that the force in the Y direction is going to equal 800 Newtons times the cosine of 20 degrees. Eight hundred times the cosine of 20 is uh, 700. 51.75 Newtons. Once again, way too many significant figures, but we'll take care of that in just a minute. All right, now if you look at the force, it's gonna be positive in the X direction, positive in the Z, excuse me, positive in the Y direction, positive in the Z direction, but it's negative in the X direction. So if I were to write this as a vector, I could say that force is equal to the negative of 115.6, which is really negative 120 in the proper number of significant figures, I plus 751.7, which it's one extra, but I'll say 750 Newtons J. And then in the Z direction, positive 248 or 250 Newtons K, right? So this is the first part of my answer right there. Everything still on the screen? Yes. All right. Let me pull this up a little bit so we can get a little bit more scope. All right. So there's the first part. All right. Now, how am I going to find theta x, theta y, and theta z? Well, there's several different ways to do this. I prefer to do it as mathematically as possible because it carries over into um, into other uh, aspects of analysis. In other words, we know that uh, the angle in the y direction, uh, theta y is 20 degrees. We really don't know these two. And we could do it through geometric or a trigonometric construction, or we could also say that we know that another way to write that force is going to be 800 Newtons times, um, theta x i plus theta y j plus theta z k. And if we look at each direction in the x direction, we can say 800 newtons times theta x is equal to whatever the component is in the x direction, which is negative 115.6 newtons. That means that theta x is equal to negative 115.6 newtons 
over 800 newtons. Oh, I'm sorry, this is cosine. Sorry, directional cosines, very important. Don't wanna leave that out. Okay, there we go. So the cosine of theta x is negative 115.6 divided by 800, which is negative 0.1445. And therefore theta x is the inverse cosine of that number. And that is second cosine second answer equals 98.3 degrees. Okay, so that actually um, makes some kind of sense. In other words, if it were 90 degrees, it would be straight out. 93 means it's going to be canted out to the left, which means that it is actually, that's why it's a negative because of the quadrant. Okay, now we already know what theta y is, but let's just test our work. Um, we can say that cosine uh, theta y, oops, there we go, similarly is going to be the magnitude in the y direction, which is 751.75 divided by 800, and those are both newtons, so they cancel out. So if I take 751, and all I'm really doing here is checking my work, because I've already done this divided by 800, that means that the cosine of theta y is 0.9396, or that theta y is equal to the inverse cosine of that number, which is second cosine second answer equals 20 degrees. If it wasn't, I would have a math error somewhere and I would know that I need to go back and do it because it can't be two things at once. All right, and then finally, last but not least, cosine theta z is going to be the magnitude of that force in the z direction, which is 247.98 newtons over the entire magnitude, which is 800. Once again, newtons and newtons cancel out. So here we get 247.98 divided by 800, and that value is. 0 0.309975. Therefore, theta z is the inverse cosine of that value. Second cosine, second answer equals 71.94 degrees. 71.9 um, degrees. 71.9 degrees. Okay. So, what that means for our answer. The first part, we're asked for the components. We've got that right here. And the next, we're asked for the directional cosine, theta x, theta y, theta z. And those values we just found. So theta x is 98.3 degrees, theta y is 20 degrees, and theta z is 71.9 degrees. And so those are our answers. Okay, now do you guys have any questions about that? Max, you look like you got a question. So we take the magnitude of the component? Yes. In respect to the whole. That's correct. That is the most mathematically analytical way to get the directional cosines. Absolutely. And directional cosines and then consequently the angle itself. There are other ways to do it. Um, but they just, they involve a lot of spatial reasoning, which is, which is terrific, but it just doesn't really go anywhere in terms of this class. So that's why I presented it that way. Can we do it with the uh, argument? Absolutely. You absolutely can. Any inverse function. Cosine minus one is just arc cos, just another, another expression for that. So yeah, absolutely. Good questions. All right. Any questions, comments? The one thing I would like to really point out to you, and this is not based on anything that I'm seeing in your guys' work, but in the past, sometimes my students have confused the 
naming of variables. So it's very important to note that when a directional cosine or component is subscripted with a single variable, that means that it's with in relationship to an axis. If it's subscripted like this, theta x, y, theta x, z, or theta y, z, in other words, if there are two variables, that's with respect to a plane. Okay, so you have to break up that coordinate system, that three-dimensional um, Cartesian coordinate system into the three planes. And in the case of the way the authors have drawn this one, the XY plane is uh, flat with the, um, with the plane of the paper or the page. Uh, the, XZ, the XZ plane is the floor, it's horizontal floor. And then the YZ plane would be coming straight out. So as long as you keep those things in mind, I think you'll be okay. All right. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is to make sure that you know what to expect for the quiz when you open it up. Now the quiz, which is right here, is not proctored, but it is timed. So when you open it up, I'm gonna to switch to student role here. So we can, yeah, there we go. So I'm just take a look at student here. All right, when you open it up, it will just tell you a little bit about the quiz and it tells you, it says you're allowed two attempts or not. You're only allowed one attempt, but the time limit is one hour. So once again, see, I'm seeing something I have to fix here. Sometimes my instructor view looks a lot different than the student view. So, but you only get one attempt. But you have an hour to, to take the quiz, but you don't submit it here. In other words, you're just going to get the problem up on the screen, but you need to just do work just like you're doing a homework problem and then put it here and then scan that in underneath it where it says submit work for quiz number one within an hour of opening the quiz. So when you open this, you need to make sure that this comes in within the hour. Okay, so there's not, it's not proctored. It's also not closed book. You can use any resources that you want, including our Moodle page. So you can use your homework, you can use the Moodle page, you can use your textbook. Um, the purpose of the quiz is to step you through a problem in the same way that I hope that I want to see for full credit how you do the midterm exam. So it's not, it may be, it, this will be similar to one of the problems on the midterm exam, but the reason that I want you to do it this way is I broke the problem down into several parts so that it will say, you know, do these explicit things. Because once again, as engineers, it's really, it's our obligation to make sure that the people who are reading our work understand it. And so explaining yourself mathematically and graphically as you go along is a big skill that we're learning right now. So make sure that you, um, that you take that into, into consideration when you're working the problems, but the quiz will step you through it. Then on the quiz, when I grade them, I'll wait till almost everybody has them done. I, I like to grade everybody's stuff together so that I can stay really consistent, but um, I'll give you comments back. I'll give you feedback. And the feedback is really directed toward you taking the midterm exam so that when we take the midterm, you're, I would like it to be no surprises. I like to think it will be that you'll be ready to go. I understand that from a student's point of view that sometimes things come together in a different way, but I don't. I really don't want to surprise you in any way. And I'm not looking for, on a quiz, on a midterm, really looking for proficiency, not looking for flashes of insight. So uh, I'm hoping that what, what my goal is, is to test you on explicit skills that we've learned. So um, there's never anything like, I remember one time I had a professor say, if you're out in the oil field and you get stuck um, and you have a pause attraction rear end in your pickup, what, how would you get out of it? I'm just like, well, that really has nothing to do with reservoir engineering, but um, I'm sure it would be valid at some point in my life, but I don't really like that problem on a test. So I never do that. Never, ever do that. So, so any questions? You guys are going to make it too easy on me. All right. So, um, so that's it for today then, gentlemen. So turn in homework one, if you have, and I think almost everybody has, turn in homework two. So we should be working on now, then when you're done with homework two, 
uh, do the quiz. And I'm going to be here all week. So if you have questions or problems, just let me know and we can meet uh, to talk about them. Or if you um, if if you just want to correspond, if you want to do a Zoom meeting or if you just want to correspond through email or texts, uh, whatever works for you, just let me know and we'll get her done. All right. All right. I'm going to quit recording now.